Good morning. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee and Chat with Hallie Bridgman. I'm so happy you could join me. I have my cup of coffee, so I hope you have a cup of coffee or tea and have a few minutes while we chat. So I know I'm late this morning. It's 1030 my time and uh, we've had a morning here. <laughs> Scott had some pretest for math that needed, I have to check his work because he would brush through and not care and just get it to be done and so yeah all tests I have to go in and like make sure he actually like put an effort in which has been fine um, but there were three today because it's the last week of school and I guess they were all pre-test prepping for um, the final or whatever I don't know so good morning Christina so uh, I so in the middle of that like Jeb's panic because the cat's puking in his bedroom and in the middle of that I had to do an email thing for Greg and then it's just hi <laughs> here I am so it's not been a bad morning it's just been things kept me from getting into my office and uh so I'm so happy that y'all are here good morning Cindy I'm happy you joined me um yes math homework is fine except here's the thing about uh, Scott with math he has to do it the way he learned it the first time and and that's part of the script writing for autism in his brain so it's fascinating to watch him I can't do it perfectly and I've tried to record him but he catches me so like if he's adding numbers you know how he learned to count to add when he was in preschool or whatever good morning Sarah uh, he does he adds this way even if he was doing like seven plus two and he should, you know, at the age of 13, know that that's nine. He still has to do this. But what's fascinating is he does it complex. Like he, it's almost like he has an abacus in his mind and the fingers represent all the different beads in an abacus. And he, he does it with both fingers in this really complex way. And it's fascinating. And so when he came home with um, multiplication, I was like, oh, there's no way. I don't even know what we're going to do. And that kid, because he learned multiplication by memorizing a multiplication table, it's just boom, he knows, boom, he knows, boom, he knows. And then, and then algebra, I thought, oh, Lord, we'll never make it to algebra. But they're not teaching him to count on his fingers in algebra. They're teaching him, here's how you work this formula. And so he learns it that way, and he just does it. So he does all these really complex things. But then when it comes time to add, he has to use his fingers. <laughs> Yeah, Christina, Austin can only do it that way. His teacher teaches it the first time to you. Right, which is why we had such a problem with, um, uh, what's the math called? I forget. Whatever the math that everyone hates is called. Because the intent of it is to teach all the different ways of doing it. And uh, common core math, that's it. So the intent is to teach all the common core math. or Within common core math is to teach all these different ways. And so it's supposed to be... Like what, what triggers that kid's mind. And so all the kids have like these opportunities to learn these different ways and the way that, that like connects with their own brain. Good morning, Charmaine. And uh, it was awful for us because Common Core meant he had to learn this one mode of math six different ways. And so the first time he could do it and then the other five times he didn't know what to do because it didn't make sense to him because he didn't learn it that way. And so finally, like every elementary school teacher agreed to just let him do it to get the answer, <laughs> however he could, whatever that meant. And so, um, but there was like, I was helping him with homework over a weekend one time early this year. And he, uh, I was showing him how to do it the way that I knew how to do it. And he's like, that's not right. And I finally texted the teacher and I said, please tell me the words you used in explaining this to him so that I use the same words as you because I'm getting him the right answers, but he doesn't trust my words. <laughs> so, um, uh, but next year we're homeschooling and we're using the BJU homeschool curriculum. And we're super excited about that. Number one, because the science is young earth creation and that's our worldview. And all of the curriculum is faith-based. And so, but he's going to be like, I just signed him up for eighth grade, just a general eighth grade, because honestly, I'm not quite sure 
all of his levels um, because he's learning so well at home versus a school environment. I don't want to assume he can't learn a normal eighth grade schedule. And so he's just getting pre-algebra. And so I'm really curious to see if that's above him or below him. I, 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 I'm curious. So I hope you all had a great Mother's Day to you mothers out there. I had a fantastic Mother's Day. My daughter came home. Um, she graduated from University of Kentucky Friday. And we would have had a graduation ceremony Saturday, but um, we didn't. <laughs> and we would have had a big giant party Saturday in Lexington, Kentucky, but we didn't. We instead uh, celebrated at home with her, just enjoyed her being home. And, um, and then Greg uh, bought takeout for lunch and then takeout for dinner. So <laughs> I didn't do anything all day. We had a issue to deal with personally in the evening with uh, one of our sons, but I just, you know, that was that all that took was like haircutting and shampooing and laundry and all of this stuff. So uh, it wasn't, and we watched, we introduced the boys to Pirates of the Caribbean. We thought they might be old enough to watch that movie, and Kaylee hadn't seen it since she was a little girl. So it was like this fun fest of like nostalgia. And then um, it was a great Mother's Day. And uh, I hope you all had a good Mother's Day. I know it's not fun being confined. Oh, and then we got to Zoom with my whole family, which is really cool because we're spread out. Like I have a brother in Denver. I have a brother in Sydney, Australia, a sister in West Virginia. My parents are in West Virginia. So I set up the Zoom and said, invite all the kids. And so I think every single grandchild and all, the, all four of my parents' kids, and we all got to Zoom. And it was wonderful. And it was my brother-in-law's 40th birthday, too. So we got to tell him happy birthday in person. <laughs> so I need to set stuff like that up more often. It's like it didn't even occur to me that my parents would know how to Zoom until I was talking to my mom on Saturday. And I'm like, oh, by the way. <laughs> so, um, okay. So my question today is, what is your most favorite thing to do in the world ever? So I have a couple of answers for that. Um, number one would be cooking an amazing meal for friends and family that actually ends up good. <laughs> like I stress every time I cook that it's not going to be good every time it's good, but I still stress until like people are actually enjoying it and eating it. That's up there. But also what's up there is like enjoying a really, really good movie with my husband because we both love movies and we both love good movies and we're constantly seeking out good movies and like going to the movies is one of our our dates like it's a sure thing <laughs> we're going to a movie we had a whole weekend last year it was last year or the year before my parents had the boys um during our anniversary and so we had this long weekend and no children and we thought oh we can watch all the movies and there was nothing playing <laughs> But I remember my 30th birthday, Greg took me to New Orleans. He, we went to Biloxi and we went to New Orleans. And it was we took a four-day weekend to do it. And uh, we saw four movies on that four-day weekend, as well as gambling in Biloxi, as well as enjoying New Orleans. <laughs> so we went to four. One of the movies was in the casino in Biloxi. So um, we just I just love going to the movies. And I love having him to share them with me. Like I want to, I want to be like hyped about a really good movie and, and have someone as hyped as me to talk about with. And then, and I like it with him because if it's anyone else, I always worry, are they enjoying it, etc. So, um, and then, um, I'm making sure I'm seeing all the, the comments because it wasn't scrolling and I missed a bunch. Good morning, Mark. Hey, Tracy. It's good to see you here. Uh, so, and then, like, the third most favorite thing ever in the world to do would be, like, to completely lose myself in a really good book. And that happens less and less for me as, I've, as I write more and more. I'm unable to turn off that internal editor in my mind. But when it happens, it's wonderful and amazing and I go on that ride and I love every minute of it so yeah so three things and they're all none of them are even really equal to each other um, 
I did, Christina, I did get a screenshot of my family. It was wonderful. Um, and I was, you know, it was, I can't believe we hadn't done that before. So that answers that question. Um, I feel very chaotic in my brain right now because I was late and I'm trying to, my comments aren't doing what they usually do because it's all a new interface. And um, I was trying to answer questions and answer the original question at the same time. So yeah, my most favorite thing in the world to do ever is cook, go to the movies and read a really good book. So <laughs> y'all have a great week. This is our last week of school and Friday's our last day and then we're gonna start the summer and then um, our homeschool, like it's an online curriculum and they start, uh... oh, JC, we, we shared two top favorites. That's awesome. I do like going outside, uh, but it's it's just not on my like definite like I never even thought of it until like two people in this list of comments have said I like to go outside and go to explore outdoors. Like it didn't even occur to me that that should be one of my favorites, and it's like oh I like that too, but it, obviously not as much as I like reading a book. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, our homeschool starts can start as early as July 1st, but I honestly don't want to do that. I honestly want to keep a traditional school year because that's what we've always done. And I don't want to like overload us on our first year of true homeschooling. I would rather, so I sat down and I made the schedule because Kentucky requires it. And I filled in, you know, days off and holidays and, you know, spring break and Christmas break and all that. And um, we like, starting like mid-August and ending the end of May, it, we have like three extra days that Kentucky doesn't require. So we're like by the skin of our teeth getting in, which is fine because we're homeschooling. So, I mean, I could throw in a Saturday here and there if I wanted to. It's not a big deal. So y'all have a great week. I know that uh, states are opening back up. Be safe. Be smart. Wash your hands. And um, don't take unnecessary risks. Do you have to pay for the homeschool program you chose? Yes, we paid for it. It's, it's BJU. Um, I forget what the what that stands for. Um, BJU Press. BJU home, Press Homeschool dot com is what we went to. But like, if if you're looking for a um, homeschool to do and you like the look of BJU, then it's better to go through a rep because you get like discounts and stuff. Like we end up paying maybe a quarter or a half of what we would, not a quarter, like a half or three fourths or something. Like we got a massive discount going through a rep who knows how to apply all the discounts. So um, we're really excited. I had been investigating all the homeschools that were recommended by Answers in Genesis because we wanted a young earth creation science. And uh, so I just went through their recommend, recommended people and um, then kind of went to social media and asked people about it and then looked at the ways. And one of, Abeka was on our list and I liked Abeka's curriculum and I have friends who do Abeka, but my concern was that uh, the the way that the teachers teach to a class and kids in the class answer questions and raise their hands and that stuff. I felt like Jonathan would miss being in a classroom because he loves raising his hand, answering questions, you know, being part of, of that culture. And so watching a teacher to work that way, I think that he, it would have been mentally, it would have mentally hurt his feelings not to be part of it anymore. So, uh, the, um, BJU is more like what they're doing now where there's like a video of a, of a teacher teaching, but it's as if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, like Mark is saying, a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session instead of a classroom environment. And so that was really the, like the two things that made us go BJU versus Abeka was the way that the videos work. So, um, Cindy, I will answer your question in another video because I could, you know, teach a class on that. <laughs> so, but thank you for the compliment. 
Um, Y'all have a great day, a great week, and I will talk to you next Monday. God bless you. Let me figure out how to end this in the new system. Oh, end live video.